Welcome to our Wednesday Reflections. In the month of June, the church celebrates some very important solemnities. Uh, we have the solemnity of the Holy Trinity, the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ, the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the solemnity of St. Peter's and Paul. We, each Wednesday, one of us priests is going to offer a short reflection in anticipation of the solemnities, uh, hoping that already thinking about it, you may participate more fully and get the most out of these masses. Now, I got the easiest one, the Holy Trinity. That, my friends, is a joke. <laughs> All of the, the priests were very happy that it was in their turn to give the reflection. Now, all kidding aside, of course, uh, it would be impossible for me to explain the long history of the development of our belief and understanding in the Trinity. But I'll do you one better. Um, I want to invite you to pay attention to the language that we use during Mass with regards to the Trinity. As we do so, we are going to realize that the language that we use reveals what we believe about the Trinity. That way, you have just saved yourself a whole semester of classes at Seton Hall with Monsignor Guarino. You're welcome. <laughs> now, let me use the Roman Missal uh, to point out a few things, and I'm just going to focus on the introductory rites of the Mass. Right off the bat, we begin Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Already we are affirming our belief in the three persons of the Trinity. Later in the Creed, we are going to, of course, affirm that more clearly when we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. I believe in Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Now, back again to the beginning. Right after the introduction of the sign of the cross, normally the priest uh, gives one of a number of readings. For the most part, we say, the Lord be with you. And of course, the reply is, and with your spirit. Or, if you haven't been to church in a while, and also with you. Now, that phrase, the Lord be with you, of course, if you think about it, uh, are we referring to God the Father? Are we referring to the Lord Jesus Christ? Or the Lord the Holy Spirit? It doesn't specify. Which means then that at that moment, when we use phrases like the Lord or God Almighty, we are talking about the triune God. And so as you go through Mass, and this is very important, because as you go through Mass, anytime that you see the Lord God or Almighty God, Whatever we are saying about the Trinity, we are saying about each person of the Trinity. So for example, right after the penitential rite, the priest says this prayer, may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Realize that it says Almighty God, may Almighty God. It doesn't specify which member or which person of the Trinity, meaning that we are believing this equally of the three persons. So we believe that the Father can forgive sins. We believe that the Son can forgive sins. We believe that the Holy Spirit can forgive things, that sins. And if you go throughout the whole Mass, if you pay attention closely and you see the language, you can see the relationship between what uh, the language that we use and the things that we believe. Now, I won't go through the whole Mass, of course, because it will take very long time but I want to invite you especially this Sunday Trinity Sunday to pay attention to those things those words that we use to refer to the Trinity to God the Almighty Father to Jesus Christ the Son and to the Holy Spirit and in a special way I want you to pay attention to the preface that's the prayer that we do right after we sing or say the Holy Holy the Sanctus pay attention to that because in just a few paragraphs we can see, in just a few paragraphs, we can see uh, a whole history of our belief in the Trinity. Now, I leave you with a final blessing. May Almighty God bless you.
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.